Hi! So today we're gonna talk about Galeazzi and Montegia fracture. What is Galeazzi and Montegia fracture? A Galeazzi fracture is defined as a fracture of the middle to the distal radial shaft with subluxation or dislocation of the distal radial ulna joint. These injuries usually occur by axial loading on an outstretched arm with pronation or supination of the wrist which determines the undulation of the fracture. While for Montegia, a Montegia fracture is defined as a proximal one-third ulna fracture with an associated radial head load dislocation. The term Montegia lesion describes a number of traumatic lesions that have in common disruption of the radial head and fracture of the ulna at any level. Classification of the Galeazzi fracture. There are two classification systems that have been proposed when categorizing Galeazzi fractures. The first classifications were based on the position of the distal radius, where is type 1 the dorsal displacement and type 2 the volar displacement. The second classification system is based on Rettig and Raskin who categorize Galeazzi fractures based on fracture stability, where type 1, the fracture occurring distally from the 7.5 cm demarcation and type 2, fracture occurring proximally from the 7.5 cm demarcation. Classification of Montegia fracture. Type 1, the proximal ulna is fractured and radial head dislocation directed anteriorly. Type 2, both the ulna shaft fracture and radial head dislocation are directed posteriorly. Type 3 is the ulna fracture with a radial head dislocation directed laterally. And finally, type 4 fractures of the ulna and radial shafts with an anterior radial head dislocation. Next, incident and prevalence. For the global incident and prevalence, Gazi fracture account for approximately 7% of all forearm fracture in adults. One in four radius shaft fracture is a true galaxy injury. These two forearm fracture are far more common than mid shaft forearm fracture, which occur in about 1 to 10 per thousand people per year. Why for the Mertagia fracture account for approximately 1% to 2% of all forearm fracture. These two forearm fracture are far more co- frequent than mid shaft forearm fracture, which occur in about 1 to 10 per thousand people per year. Incident and prevalence of glazy and motograph fracture in Malaysia. The overall incident of the fracture increased with age and main dominance were noted starting from the schooling age. More fracture occur at home 38.8% and 52.3% of all fracture were due to the low energy fall. Sport injuries were mainly due to the playing football and road accident due to the riding bicycle. There were 14 night children with incomplete fracture and 19 with the Pfizer plate fracture. Next. Etiology of the condition Galeazzi fractures most commonly result from a fall onto an outstretched hand with an extended wrist and hyperpronated forearm. The energy from the radius fracture gets transmitted towards the radio ulna joint leading to dislocation of the DRUJ. Montegia fractures most commonly result from a direct blow to the forearm with the elbow extended and forearm in hyperpronation. The energy from the ulna fracture get transmitted along the interosseous membrane leading to rupture of the proximal quadrate and annular ligaments disrupting the radiocapitular joint. For both, these fractures occur with a bimodal disruption. The yapsil forearm fracture in young males are commonly due to high energy trauma such as sport injuries, falls from height and motor vehicle collisions and fracture in aging females are due to low energy trauma such as falls from ground floor. Then we move to the clinical feature of the condition. Clinical features of the Galeazzi condition. First, the forearm may look broke and the arm itself is difficult to move. In serious cases, the bone may break through the skin. The patient or individual may feel pain or tingling elsewhere on the affected arm and in the hand. Finally, a bruise will usually form around the side of the fracture. Clinical features of the Montegia condition. First, the individual or patient may feel pain in their elbow, especially during the forearm rotation and elbow flexion. At the affected area, there will be swelling, crepitus, deformity, paresthesia, and also the feeling of numbness. The dislocated radial head is sometimes palpable, and in children, Montegia fractures may manifest with plastic deformation. Next, we will look at the Galeazzi and Montegia fracture management, which will be divided into surgical and conservative management. Firstly, we will look at the management of the Montegia fracture for pediatric. For conservative management, when the ulna is in plastic deformation or incomplete fracture, it is treated with class reduction and splint with the elbow flex at approximately 110 degrees in full supination. But, when the ulna is in complete fracture, it is treated with elastic intramedullary titanium nail fixation for short oblique fracture and ORIF using plates and screw for comminuted or long oblique fracture. In Montegia fracture for adults, in conservative management, when there is minor ulna fractures, it is treated with sugar tongue spleen in supination for bado type 1 and type 3. Whereas, for surgical management, there are three conditions. First, acute fractures which are open or unstable open oblique, which are treated with orif of ulna shaft fracture using plates and screws. 
The second one is failure to reduce radial head with orif of ulna shaft only. It is treated with orif of ulna shaft fracture and open reduction of radial head. The third one is transverse or short oblique fracture, which is treated with IM nailing of ulna. In Galeazzi fracture for pediatric, for conservative management when there is minor fracture, it is treated with close reduction and spleen above elbow casting in supination. While for surgical management, when there is irreducible and unstable injuries, it is treated with open reduction and internal fixation or if using plates and screws. In Galeazzi fracture in adults, conservative management such as cast application is not suitable and leads to unsatisfactory results. Surgical management are more preferable. For surgical management, all cases as anatomic reduction of DRUJ is required. It is treated with ORIF of radius with reduction and stabilization of the RUJ. Next, we will continue with the course and prognosis. For course and prognosis of both condition, children have less complications than adults as they heal faster and better. Hence, for the healing process of children, they will usually heal after 6 to 8 weeks of treatment. For adults, it is categorized into two. Firstly, for low physical demand patients, they will fully heal after 8 to 12 weeks of treatment, while it usually takes 12 to 16 weeks of treatment for patients with high physical demands such as athletes. Finally, we will move to impairment and functional limitations according to ICF. For both Galeazzi and Montagia fracture, the impairment are pain, limited range of motion, forearm muscles weaknesses, swelling at the fractured part, and numbness or tingling sensation if nerve injury occurs. For the functional limitation, if the fractured hand is the dominant hand, the patient will have difficulties doing daily life activities or any bilateral hand activities. For example, they will have difficulties brushing teeth, reaching out for far objects, grasping objects, difficulties to bring food to mouth, and difficulties in wearing, buttoning, and zipping clothes or pants. These activities need a lot of forearm movement that is mostly affected by Galeazzi and Montagia fracture. For the restriction, in work, the patient will have difficulties in doing work that needs hand and elbow joint movement, muscle strength, and range of motion. For example, painter, office worker, mechanic, and athlete. In education, students will have difficulties to write, type, and grip objects such as pens. That's all from us. Thank you.